Well, uh, my title is uh, Bring AI and uh, R&D to the Classroom. Uh, this title is set by Elan. I like it, just like, like I like everything they're doing in terms of AI. <laughs> um, this page is the home page of the project uh, we did uh, as an academic advisor for Penn State, especially World Campus. I uh, will introduce some details later. So uh, my presentation will focus on these three aspects. The first is the story about how we started uh, this project, uh, Professor Nittany. And uh, then we'll introduce how we bring the R and D to the classroom. Then the third is some sorts um, AI education classes. So first is, uh, let's start with this uh, project, uh, Professor Nittany. Uh, this is our, I'm very uh, introduce, this is our winning project in the first uh, Nittany challenge. Uh, started uh, 2017, 2016, then 2017. Um, before we mention this project, actually, uh, three years ago, three years ago, at least time, after, just after the final week, I think, uh, during the summer, there are several visits from IB, IBM. Uh, they come to introduce uh, their uh, Watson product. And they, will, they will, we are welcome here. Chancellor, the faculty, staff, and uh, students. So this picture, many of you know him as a rich graduate, is an outstanding engineer uh, in software. Uh, at uh, IBM, he's also an alumni of Penn, uh, Penn State University, and uh, he just retired. Uh, he was uh, three years ago until last year he retired. He is a uh, representative uh, of IBM for Penn State University. It's called IBM. Sorry, I just have to fix the screen share. Okay, yes, you can keep going. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, well, he traveled here many times and uh, <coughs> bring the IBM people from executives uh, to uh, sales team, the technical staff, and introduce uh, the Watson product to, to us. So um, I was very impressed at that moment by the introduction of the Watson product and the services. And actually, uh, one of my research topics is in machine learning. That's a metaphor of learning. It's a very mathematical. I think people, if you want to start research, uh, continue <coughs> on this area, and they need a four year college and a three year master program in mathematics training. This will use uh, uh, differential geometry and harmonic analysis. Um, so, but after I heard this, uh, I think, wow, we can create a product right away by using the services that develop. Um, we don't have to wait. If you wait, a student to be trained, will be able to produce a product in the next seven years and even longer time. And we cannot wait. And, uh, computer science is more like engineering right now. So we want great stuff by using any tools we can have even without the deep understanding of them. Uh, so at that time, Aaron Zhou is a freshman and uh, finished the first year. And he's one of my honors, uh, second programming class student. And we met in Janka Center, fitting room. I was 
doing some heavy lifting. <laughs> and he was there also doing exercises and uh, just seemed final. And uh, he asked me if I can advise him to do a research project, undergrad research project. And he explained to me what he wanted to do is about the range seats in a classroom. Basically, it's a combinatory problem, mathematical problem. Uh, I saw it really good. And uh, certainly, as a student, uh, you, can, you could get out much research experience uh, by doing this kind of project. But on the other side, I saw that uh, well, Furman's conjecture already have been solved. And this problem usually will be already solved. There's all kinds of solutions for that. So the output uh, will be only for his experience of doing research and learning stuff. And well, at that time, I just heard the IBM people introduce the Watts. So I saw him well, come to my office the next day. And uh, then the second day he came to my office, I introduced him to Watson. I thought this will, just like the world, will be have a big effect in your in the future and in your career. And, uh, you know, it's a game changer right now. And then he listened. I know he's a really smart user. And, uh, he doesn't speak a lot. His language basically is his action. So he started right away and switching materials for the IBM was in action. Uh, by the way, IBM did a great job of um, popularizing their, their, their knowledge about Watson and provide excellent uh, training in this area. Uh, so we start that way. We do some independent study and that summer. We learn, we start learning this once in service. And meanwhile, during that summer, you know, IBM come to Bell, not just for development. We have the local company, Air Insurance, which is uh, one of the Fortune 500 companies. They are a big customer of uh, IBM. They use lots of IBM products. So IBM also want, want the air insurance to be able to use Watson. You know the all these industry because of competence. If you use some latest technology, they give you the age in this competition. So so air insurance, we have a good relationship with us. And uh, you can see this picture uh, here. And this is the supervisor and also our member of industry advisory board. And uh, they want us to use Watson to do, develop some kind of project for them. So the idea is uh, they want to develop a help desk. Uh, intelligence help desk to answer phones and uh, maybe internally explain how to use some software. There's some public software, some of their own uh, private uh, used software. So I think this is a great model. We have this three party partnership. So it's aligned with what just uh, there refuse the, the mission of tech, tech. Um, the educator, the vendor, or the industry who own its latest technology, and the uh, customer or clients in the industry, like air insurance. Well, in demons, your FTEX model is more like uh, internally for this, this uh, for students. Uh, in Penn State is a big university, there's lots of requirement. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, part, yes, uh, needs there. And also help uh, students and uh, entrepreneurs. So I think it's uh, 
this is a great model um, to help our students develop some skills which are needed in the market. So uh, after summer, uh, we formed uh, the student team to do the senior design project as one of the senior design project to do uh, for the year insurance. Um, among the students, and, uh, that started in 2015, August, and then uh, across one year. And these students uh, two are hired by IBM, and uh, one is hired by Air Insurance, and continuing developing the AI products. Next, the story is that uh, at that moment, when we, in that summer, I was thinking to offer a new course uh, for students. And we know that uh, we cannot have all preparations in mass for understanding all the algorithms. Uh, but we need the students to have the skill to develop the products. Uh, so, well, with this Watson and other uh, services, tools, and uh, it's possible we can do that. We're trying to develop a course and, uh, to teach, uh, meanwhile, to learn all this by, us, by myself, too, <laughs> uh, these skills. So, this course uh, was prepared, uh, and Aaron helped a lot in uh, developing this course. And we offered the uh, first time uh, in 2016, and then we continue to offer 2017, and then next fall we we'll continue to offer it. But we keep doing some changing for this course. And start 2000, well, I mentioned that uh, I asked them to, we were learning this Watson, uh, this uh, product, and uh, there we have idea and also get some hints from this air instrument product. We saw that why would we use this to create a help desk for our students, for better students. So that's then the two students, female students, joined our team. So these three students uh, started this uh, senior design project to create an uh, advisor for better students. So that's uh, that's pilot project, and uh, well, at that moment, 2016, you know, the edtech studies uh, started with uh, um, Watson Mutiny Challenge. And that's a great opportunity for us to. We're kind of have have you prepared for that? Uh, so we proposed. We proposed and. Uh, Actually, we, we win the proposal in phase one and phase two, and joined by more students. And all these two students, they graduated and this graduate left. Uh, we joined by we are joined by some new students and uh, even faculty members. Uh, and also, uh, we have the, this Dan uh, Coder. She is the director of advising for World Campus as a subject math expert in our team. So we developed uh, many for uh, kind of pretty extensive uh, academic advisor for World Campus. So we name it uh, Professor Nittany. So we have some discussion why we need to give a name as a Professor Nittany. So Instead of we'll give a, a name um, like Alex Shah or Shirley, they basically is an assistant for a person. And here, this is for uh, certain knowledge domain and, uh, for, for students uh, as a, a big group. So that's the story we, we, we uh, developed this uh, Watson. Challenge project. 
Well, I want to think a little bit about how this project uh, was uh, created. It's similar for many kind of as a project using especially what's not using as AI services. So there's three major steps in our development of this project. One is, uh, well, like uh, Professor Nitnik, just like human being, uh, it's a chat bot, it's a loop bot. So he grows just like uh, regular human beings, if you have a good gene. So I think that, of course, our development team is part of it. And uh, the, all these uh, services, our services, genes. And the second is nutrition. That's data, the data curation, and you could get lots of data. And here for our project, we're lucky to have uh, World Campus provide, like, uh, go to provide some very quality, uh, high quality data. They have this uh, website, more information is uh, there, and the uh, edtech also help us to get some. Uh, Data, computational data, but it's hard to get all the data we really need. Um, so that's kind of the limit for our project. And the third part is training, training for the data leveling. Uh, so just like practice uh, for human beings to grow up healthy and uh, intelligent, so we need a good nutrition, to be a good training. So now the the advisor, the professor Nittany can answer questions in this area like tuition, financial aid, courses, and majors. And so we list some suggested question areas, uh, but it's different from index search is that uh, each question, if you ask in a different way, if you one ask the same things, they can the what's understand. After training, they can understand that you ask the same thing. So for each, well, the what's rank to the answer. And uh, so we provide four choices of answers. So also, this is a feedback system. Uh, if you don't like it, then they can create no correct answers. Or, and, uh, we have the rank top four answers by clicking these buttons to see them. It helps uh, us to uh, retrain the system, uh, put the feedback back to the system. And also we add some feature like a personality analysis. Uh, this is to may help advisor to know the personalities of students or people can know by inputting his uh, uh, essays, uh, the resumes, papers, to do some personality analysis. Uh, this is also a service in the Watson. And also we can use the phone and the message to access, to ask the professor meeting. So we train about using 2,500 questions. And, uh, the team um, spent about uh, one month, the whole one month during the, the summer of last year. So we come to here the lab, and we have four major developers. developers. Uh, they all, uh, we <laughs> still have one student, uh, is a uh, junior list. All the others are seniors. They either go to graduate school or, of course, like uh, Aaron um, is working for IBM now. He's also in the graduate school for software engineering program, master program. So, second is uh, I want to um, introduce uh, how we bring this AI, R and D to the classroom. Um, like I said, we have this three uh, partnership, uh, this model helps academia and industry partner and the industry consumer. 
Um, this also reflected in our traditional senior design projects. We run this many, many years uh, by school of engineering. So this picture can give us some idea how this uh, senior design project uh, was done and how start from a uh, big project and a proposal goes. And then uh, there's several people involved in different roles and uh, student teams, usually we have three students in the team and uh, we have industry sponsors. So that's the right circle. Uh, this is industry sponsors and they propose uh, projects. Uh, for example, something like a uh, insurance uh, developer pilot program. Some even a product they want us to help them develop. We show some examples. And the faculty advisors, so each team will have one faculty advisor, two co advisors. And uh, we have the uh, coordinator and the uh, course instructor to organize and uh, coordinate all the, all the work uh, for each team. Uh, so this is uh, the picture I got from our uh, senior design project uh, management uh, tools developed by our faculty member Simon Fan. Well, AI related projects, you can see that in the last three years, Increase from 80% to this year 46%. And 2016-17 mostly using Watson. Now we have about in that two years we have 11 teams, so about two teams using the Watson development product. And uh, this year uh, and uh, this uh, April. We have 13 projects. Each project has three team members. So we have six projects, sponsored projects related to AI. And two of them using Watson, or three using Watson. One use Google TensorFlow, and one use Amazon, one use Microsoft Azure. So it's not just limited to Watson. So this is one example this year, one of the teams developed for a local company. And this company buy uh, the used phones and other tablets and uh, gadgets. So like uh, the phone, you have different brands and different uh, carriers and uh, different storage, all these different years. So you just, the, the, the people, the, the customer will go through the long list to try to search the information about how much I can get by selling these forms. Uh, so we created this chat bot, the student team created a chat bot for this company. And so you just need to ask uh, questions and uh, tell what kind of form, what kind of device is, and they will interactively ask more information or give you the answers you want. Um, I was told that uh, this company, uh, they haven't found any other, there's many of these kind of companies, uh, they haven't found any other companies this yet. So I think hopefully this will give you uh, the, the age in, in, in the market for, uh, for competing with the customers. So this is another AI enhanced project. Um, we use the, this is a sponsor by Air Insurance. So the idea is that we try to gather the web information from everyone. Everyone is a sensor in the world and uh, they will type their message, send their Facebook information or 
the tweeters. So this is we gather this information to find the weather information of the people's mode related to weather. The insurance company might be able to get more information uh, for their uh, plans. So this interface they show the, the dots that tweaks and uh, different color give a different uh, weather conditions, also locations on the map. <coughs> and uh, it can be live and it can be uh, used to search historical data between certain time and, uh, uh, or location related information about the tweets. So instead of uh, get uh, weather information from the station, weather station, you can also get it from the, the people. Everyone in the sense, everyone contribute to the data. Another aspect of well, how to bring the ND to uh, IND to the classroom is we we both are computer science program and the software engineering program are added at graduate. Um, so to, we are in the framework of going through this review process. So we have our own department uh, industry as advisory board. So they sponsor our project and, uh, and uh, send their feedback about our um, students and uh, objectives, the program outcomes. So this picture is uh, our annual meeting for the advisory board meeting. Another is internship. Internship. Um, so these are some students uh, that did internship for the companies last summer. And uh, we gathered them and so introduce their internship experiences. So they're here in this uh, classroom, and uh, we have this uh, workshop or the uh, panel uh, discussion, and uh, we show them introduce their experiences. Uh, we have a good discussion. And, uh, students come, or faculty members come. This is the introduction. It's about uh, the experiences and the AI is a big part in the internship. Another thing I want to mention is hackathon, especially for computer science software engineering students. Um, this created a great opportunity for them to learn. They, they were touched last year when um, EdTech and uh, bring the sponsorship of IPsoft, uh, the, the bus, and to support the bus, the coach bus, and bring our students. We have four coach bus, uh, 40 to 50 students, and uh, went to University Park for this uh, hackathon. And you can see the photos here. There's bus here, and these are the pictures that they were taken at the uh, site of hackathon. And uh, this is their winning the hackathon. This is their classrooms. They finish projects within 24 hours. So usually students, if we don't support them with the bus, they have to drive there by themselves. It's 24 hours start from noon of Saturday until the next Sunday at noon time. And uh, because we have to travel over three hours, the students come back where to the classroom on Monday, so they're very tired. And so because the coach bus, they can sleep in the bus. So most students go there, and uh, even freshmen, sophomores. And, uh, and I, I was taught, uh, I was told by students how they, they, they were touched, and uh, they were surprised by this uh, hackathon. How much they have learned, and they, are, they were encouraged 
So they, they saw that uh, 24 hours, the team can develop an amazing part of that. Mm. They cannot imagine. I told him, yes, you can do up to two years. Mm. After one year, uh, they're freshmen, they're sophomores. Okay, my thoughts on. Uh, uh, I'll go quickly. Um, so, for well, AI, yeah, I, uh, I heard a new word introduced by Larry the tsunami. <laughs> the tsunami here. Yeah. So, we have to swim. We have to be there with the swim the tsunami. Um, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. Um, but who will work with AI? This is a pyramid structure. I think uh, probably in any of these uh, areas, it's for the people who work in these areas, the uh, pyramid structure. The first is inventors, researchers. Uh, we only have a very small number of persons in the uh, university, this uh, research lab in Apple, in Facebook and uh, Microsoft uh, doing the, they need um, more years of preparations. And the second is uh, CS professionals, AI engineers, they develop the AI products. And the third is everyone, everyone uh, will connect with AI. So our target is uh, I think for undergraduate uh, um, education, mainly for having this majority of uh, uh, pupils uh, who work on AI. So, so let's also reflect to our curriculums. Um, for example, these courses I mentioned, we started three, two years ago. So it will be the third time we offer this course. So uh, in this course, we have the general overview of what uh, the related uh, skills and the knowledge for developing product, products, and then some fundamentals and uh, the tools, what tools we can use, and uh, then we need to do, get hands dirty create the products, create the projects. So that's the idea of uh, this course. Well, um, you might have heard that uh, kind of what's the most valuable resources. Used to be the oil, but now it's dead. Uh, all these companies, like Google mm -hmm. and uh, Facebook and uh, Google, Amazon, etc. And they are very, they are currently the most valuable companies. And uh, like several times uh, of Walmart. Uh, the, the, the most important resources are the data. The data. Um, I just noticed that uh, the Facebook, uh, the net income is more than the total network income of Walmart. Mm -hmm. well, Facebook only has 20,000 employees, and uh, Walmart has uh, 2 million, 2 million, 100 times, 2, 2 million, 30,000, uh, 30, 300 employees, mm -hmm. and their net income is less than Walmart. So, so why do they have that kind of <laughs> fortune? And because everyone is working for Facebook right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you work, when you write something on Facebook, you contribute a bit to this company. Not that like Walmart people work for, uh, except they are employed by uh, Walmart. Like Facebook, like Google, like everyone is working for them because you contribute your data. So that's end of my talk. Um,
So we do need to step in to embrace this uh, AI world. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I have a few questions as I generally will generate a, a few. Some of them you've answered through uh, your process, but one, one I keep on coming back to, um, and that is the importance of framing the problem. So you, you would have the students, you've created this kind of an ecosystem for the students to work in, right? You've got the tools, you've got the training, you've got the support systems. How important as a faculty member is it for you to create the right problem? Because I think that would be what really kind of motivates and drives the students. That's a good question. Uh, well, actually, this uh, project, this uh, question, these problems are mostly from students. Mm -hmm. Not that I created for them. But this academic advisor is I probably started in the class I work in the university. And so everyone actually here, AI can help everyone. So I think uh, I just uh, um, noticed this uh, Google's uh, I.O. conference mm -hmm. that started yesterday. And uh, you will see their CEO gave this keynote speech uh, to introduce the, the, the new features and the technology in all their Google's products. They are all related to everybody's daily life. I think lots of problems, uh, can, questions, and, uh, can be solved by AI technology. So I'm, I'm wondering, as a faculty member, do you help in that process for the students, because maybe the student made the initial ideas and the old form. It's part of your responsibility to also help them frame the problem in the shape that then the technologies and experience could be brought to bear on that? Uh, this is an exploring process. I think especially at that age, like three years ago, two years ago, and all the tools actually are not very friendly as we used this year what's and uh, they keep changing. Um, yes, I will think uh, um, what I do, I think the most valuable things I just give the vision to the students, encourage them to explore. And uh, we know this is the future. Sure. Um, so in this uh, Nathan and Watson project, the most valuable time I think maybe is that the way I start. I met <laughs> Aaron in the gym, and uh, we, we talk about this, and come to my office, I introduce him, I get him started. And, uh, right, but we, we need to, for example, students to develop this project. It's not that like research, we can focus on one issues, but there is a front end, a back end, and uh, uh, for this training, we have teamwork. So as a faculty member, I think how to organize them, how to motivate them as a team or Which is, I, I would guess, would be a similar experience when they move into industry. Mm -hmm. These same kind of teams are going to be built around the problems that they'll face as they go into their career. Right. Yeah. Let me see in the room. Any, any specific questions? Uh, we'll probably need to get the mic to you just in order to have our guests online hear you as well. So my question is, um, other than uh, IBM, uh, what are current industry collaborators in uh, with EdTech efforts? Good question. Darren, do you want to take that one? Yeah, so uh, if we look at the, the AI channel as kind of our key flagship program right now, you look at the collaborators that are in that, we have IBM Watson, uh, Amazon Web Services, Google, Microsoft, um, what am I going to say? We have some ed tech companies as well, like Blackboard has been a, a great ed tech partner and really looking at exploring different opportunities uh, with us. And uh, I think Inside Track has been another option in the campus manager and primary. So when we, when we look at the model, what we're trying to do, it's, it's not just, I say just, 
Um, it's, we're not only looking at AI from the tech, just the pure technology companies, right? Like Google and Amazon, et cetera. We also think it's important to pull in the traditional solution companies, if you will, that the Penn State's already working with and some that we're not. Because of this focus of the higher ed industry, uh, our, our guiding principle is that AI is going to get infused into these existing ed tech solutions. And we think Penn State can play a role in helping some of these companies figure this out. Give an example. So, Inside Track is, uh, does student coaching. So, we think that a natural evolution of that coaching model, and of course, Penn State's paying for those coaching resources, right? We think that potentially uh, some a, a, a tool like Amelia, and Amelia is a tool that's, that's it's that platform I referred to from IPsoft. We think, you know, we look at that and say, hey, we think Amelia has potential to maybe be a, a coach in some ways, and to take on maybe some of the questions that students might have, which could be the best of both worlds. It, it helps. It helps advance inside track because that's a path they should be on if they're going to compete in the marketplace. It helps Penn State because we can potentially help lower our coaching costs if we can if we can leverage AI for a portion of that. So when you think about it, um, even though AI is this kind of mystical, you know, complex thing that we think about, you look at the where it can be applied. It's usually pretty straightforward and pretty basic, right? It doesn't have to be complex. It's just a very simple function or process, and you plug it in. And and and, and our what we're doing is Monk Sue has mentioned a couple times. I mentioned yesterday when we were talking, and mentioned during his presentation. If you wait until you have it all figured out, it's already going to pass you by, right? So you have to kind of jump in and start learning, and and see where that learning takes you, and that's what's going to be so. Sorry, I have a really long question to you. <laughs> So I kind of have a two-part question. I teach in the uh, school business, so I'm looking at interdisciplinary opportunities for us. And I can talk about AI, and you know, my students would be looking at how would they incorporate AI from a managerial perspective, from a strategic level perspective, the business. I think there's a lot of interdisciplinary opportunities. In fact, one of the companies, this is kind of the second part of my question, might be a potential collaborator for us. You know, uh, I, I'm not sure what other campuses use, but we use a simulation, business simulation in our senior business capstone class called CAPSIM. And it's used across the country. But I'm wondering, would they be a good collaborator then? Because they're always looking for ways. I mean, it's essentially supposed to simulate running an actual business. Talking about multi million dollar sensor business, students have to make all their RD decisions, um, finance, all this stuff. But I'm not sure how much AI they have incorporated. It's just just algorithms that it's, it, it, it could be even more enhanced if we can get ahead of that, um, help them get ahead of that, that curve, and maybe our students could be working on a project with them, either through my class or through a uh, joint opportunity between the school business and, and sciences, something like that. I guess that's a whole statement question. <laughs> yeah, that's, a good, that's a good observation. The thing I, uh, that resonates with me when you say that is the project that Mom talked about here in insurance. So you brought an industry that had a need. You talked about an industry that potentially has a need, matching up with the affordances and the capability of these technologies. And some really interesting things came out of it. What came out of it? Yeah, a student went to your insurance. A student went to ID. You know, it's, it's like a win win. And, and now, Darren, if you want to speak to, uh, just for a second, the industry, what's their lens? Why do they want to be engaged in this? Why do they want to be involved in working with students like that? Yeah, it, I'll give you two, two quick stories on that. So in the Nittany AI Challenge, where we had our, our first review, where we were selecting uh, from 10 teams down to five. I was sitting next to the chief technology officer of, uh, I think it was inside track. And he leaned over to me and said, hey there, I, I think you might, you might have something here with respect to driving innovation. I said, what do you mean, Brian? He said, well, companies out there today are looking for new ways to be more innovative and to drive innovation in a cost-effective way. Because that's that's the only way we're going to remain competitive is if we innovate. 
and what, what you were doing with an Indiana challenge could be an inexpensive way to innovate for companies because you bring the students to the table with ideas and talent. And we're not, and you're not honestly, not paying a lot for that, right? Um, so that's one reason. So companies are going to continue, I think, to actually tap universities and students from an innovation standpoint if we do this right. Um, and the second part from a company lens, there is simply not enough students coming out of universities with knowledge around AI, machine learning, et cetera. In fact, I'll tell you, those students that are at the at the universities like MIT, Stanford, et cetera, that are known, maybe more, more well known around it, it's nothing to have Google come in and pay over three hundred thousand dollars a year starting salary for a student coming out of those schools. So what, what we're being told from some of some of these other players is we need to find more cost-effective ways to acquire top talent. And I think Penn State has that top talent, but we're just not in we're not recognized in the same way so that this is a great place for companies to come and secure top talent at a reasonable price. So it's recruiting and innovation are two top things I think companies are looking for. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Monk, if I just go back uh, for a second to your experiences, were there anything by the way of uh, policies or procedures or anything that the university puts up as a barrier to the kind of work? And this isn't a setup. We do not have not talk about this, but I am curious. Is there anything that we do as an institution that kind of gets in the way of this integrated model you're trying to create? Well, like using this uh, Nittany, Professor Nittany's example, I think uh, the data, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to get some data from mm -hmm. the university, uh, the real data, but because of the confidentiality, mm -hmm. all this. So but EdTech, you yeah. already yeah, have a lot, and by give us some sample data. When you think about the way of you know your relationship to uh, an industry like IBM, are there any barriers about students and how that is done? Conflict of interest. It's it's a pretty good uh, university institution sees that as positive. If you found you know having students work on these very specific products mm -hmm. from say from IBM or from Microsoft, is that that's an okay? That's a healthy relationship. Well, for us, because we have this uh, uh, senior design project, so we have the tradition to work with uh, industry uh, students uh, find projects or industry sponsored projects. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think there's uh, this kind of culture here in the School of Engineering uh, promoted. And you already have close ties to the regional industries, and so that, that sounds like a really healthy system that's been Thank you. Uh, other questions? I'll throw it to you. I'm an instructional designer here at Barron's, and my question, um, essentially, I guess, for any three of you, really, is how do you make AI more powerful than to people who are not in, in um, engineering and or in sales? Because all we're struggling with is trying to get more people from social sciences involved so we can have more of that interdisciplinary collaboration. So how do you suggest we go about that? I'll let either one of you take that. Uh, it's a terrific question because we, and it's one that comes up a lot, is, uh, is this technology, does it just reside in the engineering for the, you know, no offense, but the geeks, right? <laughs> and, and I think the more we've been talking about it, realizing, and to Darren's point earlier on, it's going to impact, Mark, you said as well, everyone. Right, so say something in every field. So uh, I think your question is a good one. How do we get these technologies in the mindset of other faculty and even developers or in agriculture or whatever? Thoughts? Well, here yeah, actually we have an advantage. We already cooperate uh, lots of projects with internal offices and uh, as a uh, internal senior projects. So we usually have a tool for proposals from industries. And, uh, so, well, the students uh, will bid for them, we choose them, and our faculty members also choose them. And, uh, 
put in there and also identify them. So, so if it's wrong, it's not the other one, but usually we will take some, we will take some advantage of doing this at all. You know, I'll just, I'll just add to that. Uh, those are good points. Um, I'll add that when you look at the potential impact that AI has uh, on these various industries, businesses, etc., on what we do, it's not going to be just a technology problem, right? It's going to be a change management problem. It's going to be an organizational issue. It's going to be HR, how do we handle this? Uh, so I, I think it's going to involve many different factions. And then and, and even as you look at the, because, because AI solutions aren't your traditional, okay, let's go put some code, let's figure out the user interface, you know, you know and then deliver it. Um, I think you're going to see more emphasis being put on bringing in creative individuals. Because we have to start thinking outside the box, right? We can't just go in and just duplicate what I often refer to as fossilize an existing process. Say, well, there's the process. How do we just mimic that process? That, that would be a bad way to begin an implementation of a, of a disruptive technology. The first thing you have to do is get creative people in the room and say, let's rethink this. What should we be doing completely different that this technology now enables us to do? So I, I think it's going to be actually more focused on these other skill sets than it is on the technology side, especially as, as AI advances. It's, I mean, they're already developing programs that build AI. So if you got programs that are creating AI programs, well, the technology part is probably been programmed out of it. So now it's all these other issues we have to deal with. And personally, I think, I, and I'm just, sorry, I don't know what to start but one other thing I'll mention is I have two daughters that are going to go into the, the college at some point. One's 13 and one's going to be 10 and one's. But when I think of them going to school and they're, my wife is pushing STEM and you got to learn code and you're right, and they're advancing, pushing them in the advanced But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking the whole time, mm, don't know if that's a good idea. Because by the time they get to college, I would bet that tables are going to turn. And it's going to be, no, you got to go to a major that's going to create, make you creative. Even philosophy might be the major of choice yeah. in five years. That's, and I'll stop. <laughs> I think that's a really interesting observation. And the challenge maybe for instructional designers, but also an opportunity. The opportunity, among these one you brought up earlier about the interdisciplinary nature of this work. So maybe one of the options is to get involved with. You know, connecting up your social science uh, faculty member with someone like one suit. Because I'll, I'll go back to the very first question I asked, which is around the problem. How important is that problem? In my mind, the problem is pretty important, right? Is this a thing that we're going to work on? We have one discipline, perhaps, social science is bringing forward the problem that now the engineers can take and begin to work on. So, folks, this has been uh, a lot of fun. I suspect we probably go on a lot longer. But we, we're going to draw this portion to a close. Please join me again in thanking Dr. Sue. Thank you so much for taking the time.